Hey guys, what's up? It is me, the procrastinator, back here today with the uh, last part of Cinema Wins Everything Great About Avengers Endgame. This is part three. I'm sorry it took me so long to actually get back here, but stuff and laziness and procrastinating. I'm very good at procrastinating, okay? But uh, yeah, uh, I finally back to it. I finally decided to come back to it because I, uh, the, I'll, I'll tell you next next time we do a video, one of these videos. Yeah, I won't know. I can't really say anything because it's been a while since I watched the previous one, and I and I've been making sure. And I've funny part is I would always go back and watch part one too, but I knew not to watch part three because I hadn't seen it yet. But just never, I just kept never getting around to it. So yeah, that kind of happened. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna get into it because I am beyond curious right now about what he thinks about it about it in whole. So I'm just gonna. Just shut up and not say a thing. I won't say a thing the entire time. Won't say a single word. I, I might might say a few, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, let's let's go. Three, two, one, begin. So this is part three of a three-part video on everything mm -hmm. great about Endgame. If you missed parts one and two, they're in the description and also the little card thing up there. But in this I'll part, put in my description too, okay? Thanos and Thor and Iron Man and Captain America and Nat and the movie and time travel and details. The oh, there's so many details and also your favorite details. All kinds of fun things. Also, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, so there will be one of the worst segues you ever heard at the end. But yeah, Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare, for making everything possible. And now I'm hungry. <clears throat> oh, I like the little part three thing. So, All right. My main predictions were right. Tony died sacrificing himself to stop Thanos. Cap got a lot more screen time and retired. Ant-Man was mm -hmm. brutal to time travel. Gamora's back, but I'll be kind honest. Of. There was such an overwhelming consensus in my comments that Cap would die. I was a little on the fence walking into the theater. I, I was on the fence walking into the Pat, which is And I was ran spoiler when free. I started talking about dying three minutes in. I knew I was right. Which, to that, I I'm sorry if I spoiled it for you. I see that comment popping up in that theory video. I honestly didn't have any clue about the specifics, and that's what really made it work anyway. You know. You see where you're going? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now let's worry about how you get there. More on that later. You've all mostly been giving me a hard time about Sam getting the shield rather than Bucky, but hey, I ain't perfect. Also, someone pointed this out after last week, which I love. You're a good man, Sam. Not a perfect soldier, but uh. a good man. But you know what else isn't perfect? This movie. Here are yeah. the top 22 reasons Endgame is totally overrated. Nah, I only had one real complaint walking out of theaters, and it was that this line hit a little too close to home. I don't even know who you are. This isn't our Thanos. And that's hard because we don't know him the same way. A lot can change in four years, especially with the acquisition of an Infinity Stone. The victory doesn't have the same satiating effect. Infinity War Thanos respected our heroes. Yeah, my respect, Stark. True. I hope they remember you. Endgame Thanos does not. I'm gonna enjoy it very, very much. But I've actually come around to two things. First, our Thanos, this is rough, but our Infinity War Thanos won. He died having mm -hmm. fulfilled yeah, his he purpose, won. never knowing defeat. His own beheading was a step along the road to his ultimate goal. Even his past self recognized that. And that is destiny fulfilled. So that's dark, but reality. The second part is that since Infinity War was Thanos Prime's TP's movie, TP's death made it so that he couldn't steal the show again in Endgame. And True. that's A-OK. -okay. Endgame is not his movie. This is the Avengers movie. All of them. It's sort of funny that Endgame made Infinity War seem light on characters after all was said and done. I can't talk about everyone, but I want to talk about a few. Let's start with the can of worms from last week and discuss Thor. Are hey, the Thor. filmmakers making light of PTSD and depression? I don't think so, and I'm going to explain why I don't think so, but my opinion doesn't invalidate your experiences with PTSD and depression regarding this movie. Part of my point mm -hmm. is that everyone's experience and the way they weather it is unique. The first thing I'd True. say is that Thor's not human. I think his Literally. weight gain mostly works as comedy because he's a Norse god. Apparently weight gain is a concern for gods. I admit that's a cop-out excuse, so take it or leave it. Honestly, it wasn't handled the best, but to say this was all just for a fat joke would be missing the forest for the trees. And if it really were just a joke, surely he would have used his god lightning powers to make himself abbed up again, right? To keep us mm -hmm. from laughing during the final battle? I see this portrayal as, well, pretty real. I think people are focused on and maybe interpreting the character's responses to Thor as an endorsement of mistreating people with depression from our filmmakers. Sadly, that's real life. No one gets special treatment when they're going through something like this. And to be fair, the guy is hilariously hammered at work. Eggs? Breakfast? No, I'd like a Bloody Mary. But what's being missed is Thor himself. 
Thor is so shut off. Most of it never effectively registers for him. It's a facade. You look like melted ice cream. <laughs> for the most part, even if he laughs along, he's disconnected precisely the way he would be. There are five and a half-ish main things that do register. The one half is when he almost loses it during his ether TED talk. Then Nat's death makes him angry, denial being clear evidence of emotional distress. But the first significant response is when Thanos' name is triggering for Thor. It's a pretty clear example of PTSD. His smile Finish disappears, her. it's like he was teleported back to reality with a brick to the nose. He goes blind with rage and despair in an instant before finding another escape when Hulk says he might be scared, but obviously he's a broken person. The next two are during his Asgard reunion. We get two examples of how you can I, I still love that scene. PTSD, one good, one terrible. He's having a panic attack and Rocket slaps him. It does momentarily shock him out of it, but it doesn't help, he still runs away. Tough love doesn't work on PTSD. The other might seem like tough love, but it's just honesty with a purpose. No, you're no idiot. A failure? Absolutely. It's a little bit harsh. <laughs> Even if she's harsh, his mom reaffirms him, tells him to stop trying to be something he's not. And then the last and most poignant for me is when the new glove comes out. Thor needs so desperately to do something because he believes it will snap him out of his funk. His friends know better. Well, most of them. Everyone is tough on him throughout, but his closest friends get real at this moment. I'll admit the cheese whiz joke is a little out of place and harsh and diminishing, but that is how some friends often treat each other. I'm not saying it's okay, but again, it's real. And yeah, very you have to real, remember that Rhodey is punching up here. Thor's veins are actually filled with lightning. And honestly, for me, Broken Spine Guy gets a pass. Human airman who lost the use of his legs through gods and robots fighting it out would be very familiar with what Thor is going through. You'd like to think he'd know tough love traditionally doesn't work, but again, God of Lightning. And Rhodey's still working through his own crap, even if it's only briefly mentioned. I wasn't always like this. Me either. But please, don't try to slap or insult your loved ones out of PTSD and depression, friends. It won't work, and you might just lose yourself one loved one. I already covered my favorite part of Thor's arc. He doesn't wake up the next morning right as rain. He's only beginning his journey to put himself back together. I'll forgive well, that he's back to normal for Guardians 3, but hey, James Gunn. It wouldn't hurt to not wipe his slate completely clean. I'm not saying make him all mopey. A lot of us use humor as a coping mechanism. That part is right on target. Of course. Of course. Of course. I've already I'm betting that uh, next part of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 probably do finding a more, uh, just sorry for pausing, but still be finding a more, uh, uh, reconnecting with her because, well, this isn't Argamora anymore. It's just 14, 2014 Gamora that doesn't know any of them except for Neb Nebula. Nebula might be the key to getting Gamora back, maybe. I don't know if she'll have the same rela relationship she will have with uh, Star Lord, but, or the rest of them, anyway. So I can't say on that. And a boss be possibly getting Thor to getting closer to being better. I'm going to make a prediction that he would not be completely better at the end of it if they do it right. They might do it great and let him uh, be like this for a few movies if if they can do that. I can't I can't do want them to do that just like like I said, don't don't make it a clean slate or whatever. Make him work through it like for several several movies. Like uh, I know he has a, another Thor com coming up movie coming out. Let the Guardians of the Galaxy one where he, because I'm familiar with Craig, he's going to be with them. Let that be the start, let that be the start of it. And then the next door movie be close to the end of it. He'll like have some like demons still on him after, but he'll, he'll be better, I think. That's what, that's what I would like anyway. Let me know your, what you guys think about it, because, yeah, I could be wrong, but whatever. Let's go with Iron Man's part now. We talked a lot about Iron Man because he is so important. Without Robert Downey Jr., this universe probably doesn't exist, at least like this. Even he True. rolls his eyes at that, but we fell in love with Iron Man in a way no one expected, even us. <clears throat> that laid the groundwork for everything that came after. And you know I love a comeback story, so it doesn't hurt that he had a rough decade leading up to Iron Man. You can't credit the Iron Man role with his recovery, he'd already started down that path several years before. But honestly, I think that says even more. He sought help, slowly got back into acting, knocked it out of the park with a few non-blockbusters, and then slipped into a career-defining role. They never went down the substance abuse path for Tony Stark in the MCU because, in some ways, I feel like we got post-alcoholic Tony Stark. Tony has always been cocky, arrogant, and self-serving. Heck, he creates the first Iron Man suit to escape the terrorists. But mm -hmm. through his time with Yinsen comes out of the cave a new man. He goes out of his way in that movie to save innocent people. He carries True. that through the next eight films with a few missteps here and there. But even when he was fighting for more regulation of his own team, his goal was always to do good. Well, 
he found the ultimate good in Endgame. We'll miss you, RDJ. The MCU won't be the same without you. Ain't that same true. can be said for Chris Evans and Captain America. It's hard to remember where he came from and what made him Cap in the first place. It was never because he was strong or fast. It was always his heart. Notice Peggy doesn't keep a picture of beefy Steve on her desk. The contrast between Steve. fresh out of the ice Cap in 2012 versus 2023 Cap, though short-lived on screen, is apparent and for a lot of fans, self-evident. This is Cap pre-finding out Hydra has been inside the organization and country he dedicated his life to. Pre-brainwashed Bucky trying to kill him. Pre-losing his closest friends over the Sokovia Accords and obviously pre-failure to Thanos. The great thing about his arc is that Endgame brings him back to the Captain America we know and love. The soldier who thought the best he had was to jump on a grenade. The leader who was so instrumental during the Battle of New York. The team's moral compass doing his best for everyone except himself. The man so have a speech giver. Heart, he believed he could will Thanos and his entire army to death alone. He didn't need to say he could do this all day. All he had to do was stand up. He completes his arc so much that he's able to accept Tony's final lesson in this movie. Tony starts selfish and selfless. Cap starts selfless and selfless, but also finally internalizes that he's earned a break, a life. They both took the best things the other had going for them. It's utterly satisfying. I love every second of it. In some ways, reluctant to be famous Chris Evans and Hollywood bad boy Robert Downey Jr. were the only choices. Speaking of Cap, let's talk about setups and payoffs versus twists and subversions. I imagine 99% of the audience knew what happened when Cap did show up on the platform. There I were many ways the film could have given us more of a gotcha moment here, but the problem with a gotcha moment is that that's it. It can just be a flash of, oh, cool. But when you go this setup and payoff route, the same moment can feel earned and justified. And like there was no other choice for Steve, showing him obsess over his true north with Peggy's picture, letting it be the turning point in his battle with Cap 1.0, even giving us this heart-wrenching voyeur moment, making it almost feel wrong to keep them apart. By the end, everyone would have been furious if he didn't go back to be with her. And that makes it perfect yeah, be... closure for our first Avenger. But it does... Uh, sorry for stopping again, but during that scene where he was uh, right across her office, when I originally saw it, the one thing that, like you said, it was like something you didn't want, you didn't want to keep them apart. I was so hoping that she would like look up and see him or something, or he would jump like somehow go through the window for some reason. Make still action, but still, just something would have them meet for a moment or two. Maybe she thinks she saw a ghost or something. But yeah, I really loved his that moment right there. But uh, sorry, for, sorry. Continue bring again. Up some questions. Had Cap just come back to the platform as an old man, the questions would have been less numerous, regardless of that. Even if they did create an unsolvable mess, it was the right call thematically. But since it's fun to talk about time travel, the insinuation here is that he just lived out his life, waited in real time for the day he left in 2023 to arrive, and sat on the bench, probably watching them send his younger self back. But that yeah. doesn't really make sense since his existence in the past should create a new branching timeline. Maybe he saved the last of his pin particles for that day to finally return and then left his Peggy timeline in the past after her death? Or perhaps it's been part of this universe all along? Peggy has no picture of her husband by her bedside, but does have a picture of Steve 25 years after he went into the ice? And obviously Old Cap is going to remove all the photos of him and swear Peggy to secrecy once they catch up to the time when Cap Prime's been unfrozen. She says True. in an interview that Steve saved her future husband during the events of Captain America. That included Steve. She even has a memory lapse where she thinks Steve has come back, which could be a real memory from the end of Endgame. I mean, even the timelines add up. I highly doubt this was planned out, but I'm cool if they confirm it now. That'd be Each great. was pretty specific about the stones being pivotal to creating new timelines. Not anything Although else. Professor Hulk made it clear you don't change the present by changing the past. Cap existing in our timeline as an old man is changing the present. Everything else was reverted when Cap replaced the stones. Since Tony ended up getting the space stone in the 70s, Loki really ducked out here. I doubt Cap mm -hmm. was able to fix that, which does leave the door open for 2012 Loki to be alive somewhere. But also, yeah. just because Banner explains how time travel works doesn't mean he's right. In fact, we know he's not an expert. Yeah, he don't know anything. Scott, as a baby, he'll grow. While the multiverse is alluded to, personally, I think the easiest way to think about time travel in this movie is that there really is only one timeline. There was always potential for alternates, but Cap corrected them all. Banner's also pretty explicit that there are no time loops. Traveling back in time was a one-time occurrence on this one timeline. All the variants, Howard talking to his future son, Thor talking to his mom, all of that was undone because Cap snuck in and put everything back the way it was. I'll probably change my mind, time travel can send you in circles. Watch Primer yeah. if you really want to scramble your brains. But either time way, whether Cap to work lived with. an entire life in this universe or another is moot. He got to be with Peggy. The top could still be spinning, it doesn't matter. I loved Nat's sacrifice, and I loved that the team-up scene was for her. Scarlet is so pivotal to this universe. She wasn't always written perfectly, but between Winter Soldier, Avengers, and these two movies, she became an essential member of the OG team, even taking on its weirder side. I get emails from a raccoon. 
so nothing sounds crazy anymore. It's not wrong to feel cheated wrong? by her death. <clears throat> I'm working on it myself, even if I think she deserved this moment because of her importance. It's a big moment. Still waiting on her funeral, but also looking forward to her solo movie. I love the decision to give Ant-Man and Hawkeye full story arcs in this film after leaving them out of Infinity War. These huge mm -hmm. ensemble movies are tough. I'm sure Wanda stands were left wanting. I know I was sad to not even hear Vision mentioned by name, but I think they incorporated the new players without letting them overshadow the heroes we were here to see, all complete with the passing of the guard. And let's not forget about Joe and Anthony Russo, as well as Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. It's astounding to consider what they've accomplished and how many times they did it, each time building on the next from Winter Soldier to Civil War and now with Infinity War and Endgame. Credit to having a plan from the beginning. It pays off. It doesn't matter yeah, if it really does pay this off. movie down to the second. Seeing it come together was special. It's actually crazy how fast-paced this movie is for three hours. Apparently not everyone agrees with that, but we get to time travel from killing Thanos really quickly. Not even a pause to talk about the nano-suit Ant-Man Star-Lord time travel suits they build. I talked about the decision to let Infinity War's outcome stand and how much I loved it. But it does like quadruple duty. Keeping all non-OG Avengers snapped allows OG Avengers to be the one to end the conflict or at least be paramount in it. It also allows this universe, the MCU, to have stakes. Most importantly, the resolution they come up with gives us time, real time with each character we've loved for so long. Peering into the past to remind us where they came from and how long they've been going at this, especially stairs. So many stairs! Giving us closure Not enough stairs, be honest. To never expect, even with their past selves. No! In my opinion, three hours without a second wasted. One other Wish thing this longer. movie did was create so many unintentionally interesting side stories. At the beginning of the second act, or end of the first, depending on how you slice it, everyone is collecting Avengers, and it's as if they need to be pulled out of their own standalone movies. I will see everything single standalone movie. Up the non-snapped bad guys are on the globe on HBO. I'll tune into Fox to watch the Thor and Korg sitcom with guest appearances from Jeff Goldblum as Noob Master 69. Obviously, we'd all watch the NBC drama of Tony becoming a dad for five years and teaching Morgan to curse. What are you doing up? Nope. Side note, if you want to confirm that 2012 Loki is Noob Master, I'm on board with that too. Rip off your too. and shove them up your butt. But even without those Disney Plus shows being greenlit, Endgame has some absolutely stunning visuals. Sometimes full CGI characters in full CGI environments. Thanos walking through his garden Maximus style, every scene with Rocket where it's a mid or a wide or close up, he always looks so realistic. The time suits are completely digital, wrap your mind around that. Clint's boots? Not real. Cap v Cap oh. was done completely on a green screen stage. The buildings and walkways and windows and phones are all digital. Tony's well, skiing that's... is also astoundingly realistic looking. It's bizarre. The tech is so clearly there at this point, I've decided Michael Douglas just cannot be convincingly de-aged for some reason. But overall, this movie is top tier MCU beauty. I have my favorite small details that were so numerous they would have bogged the videos down more than they already were. But also, yeah, let's start a fun new segment called Multi-Part Videos Allow Me to See Your Comments and Steal Your Words for My Own Personal Gain. <laughs> Yay! You guys had lots to say, so I'm going to paraphrase, but you all caught things I didn't, made me realize things were bigger deals than I thought, and just generally increased my love for this movie. Starting with Thor calling out someone for saying that the ether was a stone. Cap's face was almost a win, saying they should amend that, but then calling it a stone in the next sentence. Many years ago, had to hide the stone. Nebula finally winning something in her life after always losing to Gamora. And That's something I didn't know. Thrilled. Cap's theme playing when Tony gives him his shield back. Speaking of music, I want that shield. a dozen of you or so were super happy to correct me about there being more horns in the opening because half the orchestra was missing. Great detail. I do oh, wow. never stick by my statement. For me, a half full orchestra made the horns punch much louder. Professor Hulk tries to console Thor, but knows he needs him to remove his hand to keep his anger in check since Hulk is still in there. These location mm. and time cards, yes. Similar to Civil War, but just so matter of fact and winking. Go ahead, get excited. We're going where you think we're going. Clint's first arrow fired after his family is dusted is at Vormir to save Nat because he'd finally returned to Hawkeye after becoming Ronin. One last one oh, is the 2,000 pounds equals a ton thing. It's a cute idea, but he says tons, which is at least 4,000 pounds. So the thing that makes it amazing for me, I already said last week, Robert Downey Jr.'s kids say that to him, which again wrecks me just thinking about it. And there are more, but this is why this movie is cinema. People connecting and discussing the things they love because of the emotional experiences this movie gave them. And here's my rapid fire list of favorites that I just couldn't fit. Nat's ballet hey, shoes, Clint's bow in the door, Professor Hulk using a pencil on the controls because his fingers are too big, the smudge yeah, on Hulk's someone. glasses, Spidey swinging on Giant Man's hand during the battle, <laughs> Salt Bay Thanos, Carol's comic accurate haircut, Peter saying, You are Mr. Stark. 
Tony joking about lingerie, Tony asking for a medic to help his past self, Tony threatening to sell all of Morgan's toys. Go to bed, or I'll sell all your toys. Rocket Not toys, Scott, a puppy. Scott standing by with orange slices for Clint. Clint expecting more Outriders after his ascent. A touching reunion between Quill and Gamora. You missed the first time, then you got them both the second time. And, Forget about that thing. being honest, there are a few moments that I... I just don't think they got enough wins. Five years ago, we lost. Today, we have a chance to take it all back. This is the fight of our lives. Hammer, hammer. Oh, uh, no hammer. We won. This is dark. Yeah, that was crazy right there. There are a whole lot of light scenes. I wonder how many, sin how many wins we'll get this time. The elevator is worthy. Trust me, I've tried it. Avengers! Just cut to 10,000, please. Uh, no 10,000. And I am Iron Man. I'll take it. I love you, please, thousand. I love you, Ah. That's good. That's and good, if you want to learn how to snap your fingers to make all the bad guys go away, no. If you I want to reconnect that. with your, uh, no. If you want to feel worthy enough to pick a, uh, look, Skillshare sponsored today's video and you can learn tons <laughs> using their service. What did I tell you about this? Yeah, story? sure. But if you go, go to that one. URL, top of the description, you can get um, two months. I'll of stop here. Because mostly just rest of it, uh, pretty much at the end of it. Yeah. I really gotta go back and watch the movie again. I have not seen, I have not seen it since I saw it in theaters. Back when it originally came out, I think, or like a week after it came out. I remember when I exactly saw it, but it's been a while. I really, I didn't notice that one little that little thing about uh, Professor Hulk using the pencil because his fingers are too big. Then I noticed that. I would never notice the smudge on glasses because I'm not that detailed or whatever. I, I just want to go to like a see if there's any videos to show you all the details things that you probably missed in the thing. But I do like what you said about all the characters and everything. Everybody had a I was going to say a perfect ending but I feel like Thor is more or less truly beginning now to be honest. And uh, Cap Cap has ended but he'll be there no matter what. Tony's Tony's the uh, Tony's dead. Tony's dead. He's like Doug. Doug's dead too. But Tony is more dead. Which is him is deader. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I feel like... The OG Avengers, their story is over. Except for maybe Hawkeye and Thor. I don't know. I feel like Hawkeye could be... Where Nat was. Be like... I don't know what he can do, but Thor is... I will, I will not going to say beginning because I feel like he began somewhere. I feel like he's halfway through where he is supposed to be. Is, is what I won't feel like. And all the new characters are just, they're just starting, I think. Probably got, well, like where they want to be or whatever. I don't know because I don't know what they've got planned. I like, I've only made the theory thing for Thor. I haven't really made it for anyone else because I don't want to do it for spider Man's yet because, yeah. And I don't want to do it for anybody else. That'd be a lot of work. But uh, yeah, the, I I do I do know that I'm feeling that the Celestials will start being involved now, possibly. But I could be and maybe the Inhumans as well. I kept hoping that because of the uh, little uh, time trip thing, something would happen where the X Men or the Fantastic Four f could find be in, find be added in. Maybe come from a different universe or whatever. Or a different timeline where they actually existed. I don't know. Maybe that's where Loki goes. He finds the X-Men X -Men timeline. And uh, stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much all I could... That's pretty much all I can actually think about where, where everything will connect. Because I bet you... how long, It took about 10 years or so for this movie to come out. So I'm going to bed in about 10 more years or more, give or take. 
we might have another movie that's like this where it's just like everybody's there but with more people maybe i don't re i don't know where they're going because they get they get space now that's a lot of people i mean they've had space for a little bit but just not as many space not as much space not as much space space but i think you guys get what i'm saying probably if you don't get what i'm saying <laughs> Then I don't know what to tell you. I could have told you to tell, ask me in the comments what I'm saying, but more likely I won't, I won't respond because I have no idea what I'm saying. I mean, I do know what I'm saying, but I don't know what I'm saying. But I feel I feel like you get, I feel like you get what I'm saying. So if you got what I'm saying, <laughs> good for you. If not, eh. But I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.